Space Punks is a cool game with many issues. After 10 hours or so of grinding the game, your character kinda looks like this. And then it's usually followed up by this. There's a lot to get through here, so let's get started. Normally I would tell you under which circumstances you should buy a game, but Space Punks is free to play, so instead let me just tell you about what to expect out of the game, the current state of the game and ultimately is it worth your time. I will start with providing an overview of the game and all the various systems and I will end with my thoughts and impressions. Space Punks is a laser packed co-op action RPG in early access and it has a year long exclusivity deal with Epic Game Store. If that bothers you, then now you know. Don't forget to leave a like if you leave the video. Oh, and it is Twin Stick Shooter with WASD movement. Are you still here? All right. The game features four playable heroes with distinct activatable skills. You pick one hero at the start and by doing the campaign you unlock these three other heroes too. I mainly played Eris, the tentacle girl, and I had a lot of fun with that character. Each hero has a dash, two regular abilities and an ultimate ability. There are a few options in the settings, but not an awful lot. You can rebind your keys though, so that's good. There's controller support. Performance for me, apart from the servers, was rock solid. On a 2080, I ran at 1440p and I had around 100 FPS. Very rarely did I see frame rate drops, maybe once or twice. Space Punks has no story worth mentioning, it's just a bunch of random missions. There's no notable character progression either in the campaign or otherwise in terms of narrative at least. Characters do not evolve, you just unlock more skills and talent points. The heroes themselves they're static however. This lack of narrative is noticeable throughout the entire game. There isn't an overarching story or purpose. Instead Space Punks consists of a lot of small gameplay elements but never manages to turn all the different pieces into a whole or wholesome experience. Let me explain by showing all these different systems. Starting with the main hub in the game, this is Devil's Gambit. It looks beautiful by the way. There are several NPCs and these NPCs give you the campaign quests. However, this doesn't just happen in order of completion or chronological order or in a way that would make sense, no. Instead, you need to unlock the campaign quests via the Fame Road. This system is basically a battle pass that works on reputation or fame. Only after reaching certain levels you unlock the new campaign quests. How do you get fame? Well, there are plenty of other systems for that. For example, contracts. These are daily and weekly quests that you can complete and they provide fame and other resources. You can do tasks as well from the task board. These are also dailies but from a different system and you can do three tasks per day so far at this point in time. There is the vault support with a repeatable scrapping mission which requires you to scrap your gear and disenchant it. But mostly you get it from repeatable activities using the relay which is basically the map. Effectively you need to do a whole bunch of chores and repeatable quests, tasks, missions etc to get your fame levels up and to unlock more things to do. That's not inherently bad, but after a few hours I felt the game was already feeling very grindy because you're doing the same thing over and over again just to get a little bit more fame and unlock the next milestone. I made it in the end to fame level 13 and power level 73 and at that point you will have unlocked all the campaign missions, all the heroes, you run around with very decent gear and there aren't that many reasons currently to keep playing. Sure, you can increase the fame levels more, but apart from gear here, there is not much else to unlock. Space Punks doesn't launch with a whole lot of content in that regard. In terms of content, the game currently has two planets available, Stopan and Bannock. The campaign quests and repeatable activities play out on these two planets. They're very different in terms of layout and atmosphere and have different enemies in them as well. And apart from the campaign and the activities that you normally find on the relay, there are two more game modes over here. You have the shooting stars, which is PvP, and you have the heist. And I'm honestly not sure what this is. The reason why I am unsure is because you can't enter these game modes unless you have a full party of four people. And the reason I can't get a full party going 
going is because there is no matchmaking in Space Punks. And because this game is epic only, I have no friends either I can play with. It's genius, honestly. There's no in-game chat either, by the way. There are three more things in the hub worth mentioning. Number one is the vault. This is your inventory. This also means that you can't change weapons during a mission. You can only create a loadout over here in the hub. Number two is the crafting station, which you can unlock around 700 fame or something, I think. Here you can use blueprints, which drop from enemies in chests, and then use several components that also drop from enemies in chests to create your own fancy weapons. Software and hardware is part of crafting too, but currently not yet implemented. And third, there is the gear shop, where you can simply buy gear. Fortunately, the game has one big redeeming feature, which you can consider the foundation or the cornerstone of this game, which is the combat. Space Punks has extremely fluid, fast-paced, responsive combat where dodging just works if you press a button, where the guns feel and sound great, where the physics and animations are spot on and killing a bunch of robots or aliens is a very enjoyable experience. They totally nailed it and I have only played single player. If you do have friends on Epic, I'm sure co-op is a couple of notches better even. But to be clear, the single player combat experience really blows some of the other similar games out of the water like Kill Squad or Solar Purge. This is miles ahead, honestly. Because of the art style, which is basically top-down Borderlands, the enemies stand out and they're easily recognizable, so that's good. The same is true for chests, and despite the chaos unfolding on screen from time to time, I always felt I had a good idea what was going on. I never lost track of my character, I knew when to use certain abilities, it's all really smooth. Combat is one of the hardest things to tackle in an ARPG, with plenty of other early access games struggling with this. Space Punks aced it, and this is excellent news because there's one less thing to worry about. Instead, they can worry about the servers, because this is an online game. With dedicated servers, the issue is they're not dedicated to remain running at the very least. As a matter of fact, I got disconnected every 20 minutes or so, and then the servers were offline for like 3-4 minutes. This has been my entire day so far. And there are not that many people playing right now. The influx of players is really minimal at the moment. Wait till release, July 14th. This is something that needs to be addressed ASAP because it's completely unacceptable. I don't care this is a free game because time is valuable as well and I wasted so much time today. Because clearly a disconnect means that you don't complete the mission and while fortunately you do keep all the gear and resources as that is written immediately to the database, you do lose all the mission in progress, including all fame and rewards, meaning you have to start over. It's bad, it feels bad, and this will hurt the launch tremendously. Good thing Epic doesn't have user ratings, but if this thing would be on Steam right now, it would have had mixed reviews at the moment at best. Finally, another potential point of concern, pay to win, is it? Well, it's too soon to tell, but I will tell you what is currently in the cash shop. Well, nothing, but you know, we'll, we'll get to this. It's free to play, Space Punks has a cash shop, and that is reasonable. So far, you can earn some premium currency doing trophies, which are pretty much achievements. But those are limited, like achievements are, and they're not repeatable. Meaning that you will run out of premium currency unless the devs implement more ways to get it. And this means you will have to buy the premium currency. You cannot buy premium currency yet, and you can't buy anything from the premium store either. That's very common in a review period, unfortunately, so content creators can't complain about this. What is available though are the various sections in the cash shop, so let's quickly go over what you can buy. There are skins for your heroes. There are avatars or portrait frames. There are starts, which are starting effects when you enter a mission, so it's purely cosmetic. There are emotes. There are dashes, which is once again cosmetic. There are attachments, like a cape, which may be cosmetic, but could also provide stats, perhaps. And finally, there is a companion that will pick up loot for you. You need to realize, however, that almost all loot is already picked up automatically, except gear. And gear doesn't drop that often. It's not really a looter shooter, it's more of a loot box shooter, actually. So this pet will help a bit, but not that much. It seems, therefore, that all cash shop items are cosmetic. 
I am a little cautious though, and that has to do with what I said about the grindiness earlier in the video. The game already feels like a grind, with the dailies, the weeklies, the tasks, the repeatable missions, repeatable quests and several other cooldown timers. And whenever I see cooldown timers in a free to play game I get a little suspicious, right? Because those cooldown timers are hampering progression, and maybe down the line you can remove the cooldowns or reset them by spending premium currency. This is speculation, but it would explain the grindy nature of the game even on day 1 of early access and that the game may be designed in a way to make you want to spend that premium currency. There is at least a clear incentive, because the game needs to make money. Something you simply don't have when asking only a box price for a game. I really hope I'm wrong here, but it does bring me to my final point. And that is that Space Punks is really not what I expected at all. I was hoping for a top-down Borderlands, but that is not what we have here. The only resemblance is the art style, the animations and the combat, which is excellent in both those games. But Borderlands has a great narrative and cheerful characters and an enticing world to get immersed into. Space Punks has nothing like this at all and instead has numerous smaller systems that seem convoluted and don't work all that well together. Where Borderlands has similar systems with crafting and whatnot, it is woven neatly into the game. Space Punks lacks that subtle integration because there is no overarching story to tack things onto. But most of all, Borderlands has a box price and the game is designed according Accordingly, meaning a strong, action-packed experience which is rather condensed and hardly ever feels grindy, unless you get into endgame boss grinding or something, and that's like 40 hours into the game. Space Punks, on the other hand, went the free-to-play route, already feels grindy from the start and it raises some question marks about monetization simply by being free-to-play. Only time will tell what becomes of the game. You may think it's unfair to compare Borderlands to Space Punks, but the game is clearly inspired by it, first of all, and second, I'm comparing concepts here. I'm not talking about overall polish or content or whatnot. Clearly, Borderlands has much more resources, but Space Punks made fundamentally different design decisions, and in my opinion, that's a real shame. I wish the devs would have gone with a box price too. Get rid of the dailies and the weeklies and the tasks and the battle passes and use the wonderful combat that they have here for an action packed narrative experience with game systems that make sense in terms of story instead of game systems that make sense in a free to play game with cooldown timers. Then again, it's early access. It is an enjoyable game when it works and there is definitely hope and a strong combat foundation. You should also definitely check it out, it's free to play after all. But I do see plenty of issues as well and I wanted to manage expectations a little bit, although I am curious to see how this game evolves over time. I will keep my eye out for sure. And that's it ladies and gents, if you have any questions or remarks put them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did and you want more like this, consider consider liking the video or even subscribing and if you really like the video and you want to support the channel you can grab a YouTube membership for two dollars which gets you absolutely nothing. But it does show your very much appreciated love and support. You can also check out my Nexus store, link in the card in the description where I am selling a few of my favorite games and if you buy those I get a small cut. Thanks for watching and for making it to the end. Love you all, see you soon, bye bye.